We're carbonating soda in the hardest way possible, harnessing the immense pressure at the bottom of the ocean. But to do it, we'll have to go deeper than most divers ever travel, where even a small mistake could mean the difference between success and catastrophic failure. This video is brought to you by Factor. The ocean covers over 70% of Earth, but most of us spend our lives without ever going more than a few meters below the surface. Even so, if you've ever taken a dive to the bottom of a deep swimming pool, you've probably felt the water pressure pushing against your ears as you descend. And the deeper you go, the higher that pressure gets. Together with the WISE Task Force, we designed a rig that could use the pressure to carbonate soda. And since building it in Ohio would be a terrible idea, Rob stepped up to lead the project. Rob's a Massachusetts-based volunteer firefighter with experience in pressurized gas systems, and he also has a sick custom surfboard business that you should totally check out on Instagram. If we were trusting anybody with this project, it was going to be this guy, so after ordering a giant list of parts to his house, I booked two tickets to Boston so we could take this thing out to sea. That is, as long as we could find a boat. We don't have a boat yet. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and we might have a place to stay. Okay. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. We're gonna figure it out. Less than two hours before we landed Boston, and we still didn't have a boat. But since we can't solve this in the air, let's take a sec to thank Factor for making this video possible. Factor is a service that sends you pre-prepared meals straight to your door. It's especially convenient in the middle of the day when I don't have time to make myself a lunch. So I can just take one of these guys out of the fridge, pop it in the microwave, make myself something that I know is gonna be tasty and healthy, and then continue on with the rest of my day. Over the past couple months, I've been trying to make more videos, and in the process, I've been shaving away at time that I have for myself. I've ended up eating a lot of fast food, and it's not really all that good for me. So Factor is a way to get the convenience of fast food while having the tastiness and healthiness of something that you make at home. Factor's cheaper than eating out, and it's also better for you, so it'll save you money in the long term, too. Obviously, I think Factor is a fantastic service, but you don't have to take my word for it. Just head to go.factor75.com slash lewis120 and use code lewis120 to get $120 off your order. That's literally $120 of free, delicious, healthy meals that you can get right now just by clicking the link in the description. Thanks, Factor. Now back to the video. As soon as we landed in Boston, we called Rob and started to formulate a plan. Our job may be find a boat. That might be our high priority task. With just four days to find a boat and finish the rig, we had to be as efficient as possible. So we started messaging everyone we could on Boat Setter to get ourselves a ride. I've been messaging around. It looks like a lot of boats just aren't in the water right now. Shockingly, February in the North Atlantic isn't a very popular time to rent a boat, and while we were prepared for the conditions, most private marinas were just closed completely. I kept reassuring Jack that we were going to be able to find something, that somebody would take the money. To tell you the truth, I wasn't really sure. We still don't have a boat. However, we do have a lead. Luckily, one guy we were messaging online gave us a tip for something we could try. And he says, lots of fishermen in Point Judith will do that. I have no idea where this is, by the way. But he's like, you have to go there and ask around. Just show up to the docks. I don't know if anyone's still in the water, but they're down there. And that was confirmed by this lady at the airport. That's where all the fishermen yeah. are. Yeah. And so if we went there and just talked to some people, you think somebody might be like, sure, yeah, we can get you out there. You never know, they're nice people. They're genuine. Are they? They're genuine. They're lovely people. Hard, hard working. Okay. Apparently, if we showed up and asked nicely, we might just be able to hitch a ride out on a fishing boat. It wasn't a sure thing, but it was our best lead so far. And in the meantime, we still had to finish the rig. Here's the rig so far. I actually haven't even seen this much of it, to be honest. We fill through this. Oh, yeah, is the exercise ball there? Oh my gosh. Dude, that's gonna be perfect. It's like the perfect size, too. By the time we arrived, Rob had already spent some time assembling the core components of the rig to save us some time. It might look jank, but the design is really smart. On one end of our system, we'll have a bottle of regular water mixed with soda syrup, and in the middle, we have a balloon that will fill with unpressurized carbon dioxide through the valve on the right, which will close to prevent gas from escaping. Then, by connecting the bottle and balloon with a one-way valve, as the rig drops further and further toward the ocean floor, the increasing ocean pressure will force the gas through the check valve and into our soda bottle, carbonating the liquid. And then immediately it'll close to prevent the pressure from escaping on the way back to the surface. The tricky part was that if we wanted actual carbonated soda, we needed to drop it to at least 180 feet before pulling it back up. And if we didn't get it deep enough or the rig cracked under the pressure, it wouldn't work at all. There were still a couple pieces to assemble, but first we had to figure out how we were going to fill this thing with CO2. The original plan was to fill the bladder with CO2 from an off-the-shelf canister. What the? It couldn't possibly be something proprietary so that you have to buy authentic cola carbonator products, would it? That would be so jank. Uh -huh. After some quick thinking from Jack, though, we found a brewing supply store in the next town over that might be able to hook us up. I think you're right, Jack. I think they have all the stuff here. Yeah. Carbon dioxide. Uh, and that looks like a standard threaded fitting, too. Yeah. With everything in hand, we could finally start assembling this thing. 
We hose clamped the tubing to keep it secure, and I created a custom deep sea soda bottle using special clear PVC, which should be pressure rated for up to 60 psi. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> our rig was starting to look pretty good, but our boat plan wasn't. While looking at depth charts, we realized that the ocean off Point Judith isn't nearly deep enough for soda. We're going to need to go straight off the coast into the Atlantic, and with only two days left till my flight home, the clock was ticking down for us to find a viable solution. This is proving to be harder than I thought. I found a guy who I think we can instant book with for like one day. Okay, let's hope this works. Hello? Hello, is this Captain Tyler? Yes. What do you want to do? Do you have to bring the equipment? Yeah, it's nothing too big. It's about the size of a Rubbermaid trash can. Okay, thanks Tyler. Appreciate that. Right, no problem. Bye. Bye. Sounds like we have a boat. As long as the weather is good, I think we have a boat. Yeah, Let's yeah. go. Whew. Once the PVC cement finished curing, we cut a pair of slits in our trash can and used a large diameter hose clamp to securely attach the bottle to the side. The issue is that the more gas we add, the more buoyant the rig becomes, so we have to make sure our anchor is actually heavy enough to sink it. Of course, how are we going to check to make sure that we can still sink it? I think we're going to try to do it in our hotel pool. We, we made it past the lobby. A bit of an issue. Please close, boys. So I guess we're just going to have to wing this tomorrow then? With everything assembled, it was time to head out to sea. On the way, we picked up our last team member, Skyhawk. What's up? Welcome. And arrived at the dock to find Tyler waiting for us. I feel like that's got to be Tyler. Yo, are you Tyler? Good to meet you. Okay, you're good. Apparently we don't need a ton of coal. Well, this says it makes up to nine liters. All right. All oh, right. that nice looks pour. cool. Nice pour. nice pour. Nice. Ocean gang, let's go. Going to sea with the boys in, in matching jackets. <laughs> to get ourselves to a sufficiently deep section of ocean, we need to head at least five miles offshore. So we loaded up the boat, Captain Tyler threw it in gear, and we started booking it out as fast as we could. And it wasn't long after we headed out that we realized this was gonna be a little gnarlier than what we'd done. Okay, we're here. We've got the, wow, we just got waves out of nowhere all of a sudden, but we're at about 178 feet of depth where we are right now. The rig is actually in the back of the boat. We ran into a little bit of an issue in terms of weight, but we got it sorted out. We're gonna tie our rope also to the top of this anchor, correct? Yep. That's the plan. Yep. We needed the rig to sink or else we'd be in serious trouble. Ready? Just send it. Okay, you ready? Yeah. yeah. Should go. Yeah, is it already to be upside down? Yeah. That's how it's gonna have to be. There it goes! Yes, it's sinking! It's sinking! Woo! Yeah! As we watched the rope continue to unfurl, the rig dropped deeper and deeper into the ocean, and the rapidly increasing pressure forced the gas out of the balloon. But back up on deck, we had no idea what was happening. So there goes thousands of dollars worth of effort and two GoPros. I and two GoPros. I hope it comes back up. Hopefully. Yeah, I really hope it comes back up. We just sent it down and according to Tyler, it's at the bottom of the ocean now, right? 182 feet. Now we wait just a minute and we bring it back up and in theory, we should have soda. Or we'll have nothing, and that's its own problem that we don't want to encounter. I think we hoist it. I let me grab my work gloves. It's not too hard to lift this rig on land, but reeling in nearly 200 feet of rope from the bottom of the ocean is a very different story. Heave! Get this sucker in the boat. This thing is no joke. I don't see the buoy yet. I can feel it on it. Oh, yeah. It's definitely still there. Oh, it's getting heavy, bro. Because we're gonna be dragging it straight up. Yeah. Oh boy. I don't know how many feet we've gone through. I've lost track pretty much completely. I think this is the heaviest thing I've listed in my entire life. I don't think I actually can pull this any further. With the help of the whole crew, we were barely able to get it back on board. Oh wow. Yeah, we got it. It's right there. Bring it in. It looks pressurized. You want to pull this in? Yeah. Come on. The gauge is at about 40 psi. All right. Which looks good. Yeah. Holy crap. That is something. So this should be filled with soda now, right? Yeah. Open the tap. Close it when you're bored, too. All right. Let's all listen. <laughs> Whoa! Holy. Can you see that? No, you're good. <laughs> all right. Look at that.
It's carbonated. It tastes so bad. <laughs> I call that a success though, man. Like, soda. It's not that's good, soda. That's soda. Is it good? Soda. No, it tastes real whack. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to my Patreons, especially Adam Ruth, you absolute mad lad. Check below to make sure you're subscribed, and I will see you all next time.